It's Chris, the head writer of this episode, so tell us. Well, head writer of the series. Yeah. I'm the head writer, but me, you, and Matt are the executive producers, so I'm not really a head writer, but anyway, go on, what's your question? Oof, that's a tough one, though, because this is your unusual episode. This is your episode where there's not really anybody else in it other than the Doctor. There's a voice, but there's no actual other physical person, so it's like the Doctor's talking to himself the whole time. Okay. Um, basically... The Doctor's fixing the TARDIS because the time rotor's gone bust. That actually was um, never going to happen. The time rotor wasn't going to go bust. But uh, f for some reason, our time rotor's not working currently. So I thought, perfect excuse for the TARDIS to go wrong. You know, you never know. The TARDIS time rotor could be the most important thing in the world. Uh, and he tried to fly. Um, uh, the time rotor works, but there was no lights. And that's what makes it go wrong. And um, basically everything starts kind of blowing up, smoke everywhere. Um, the Doctor f falls over and hits his head. And then after the titles, the Doctor's ended up in the living room. And um, he doesn't know how, he keeps ending up in the wrong rooms. He's supposed to go to the console room. But every time he tries to go to the console room, he ends up in a different room. And then he finds out that a thing called the Time Phantom is... actually really called a time phantom that's what it calls itself it's actually just a kind of orb that's like emanated from the TARDIS and grown a life and believes everything that it thinks right so um, <coughs> it sends the doctor to the never space and um, the doctor has to then escape the never space and get rid of the time phantom so he can save his TARDIS and get out and um, that's basically the synopsis in a whole well, basically, I play the time. <coughs> I play the time phantom, who takes control of the TARDIS, and sends the Doctor to the Never Space. So then, well, pretty much they take over the TARDIS, send the Doctor to the Never Space until. Spoiler alert! For the one who hasn't seen the episode, defeats me. That's it in a nutshell. Pretty much a straight character, to be honest. I'm not sure if I'm allowed to tell you this. Don't give away spoilers, just give us a clue. A little, little teaser. Will we find out what it's all about? Yes, we will. Yeah. Yay. Um, okay. I've still got time, I've still got time. Time to have a look around. It's made it look like some garden. I didn't even know it was real. This is just beyond me, beyond my knowledge. This is next level stuff. It's just, oh, oh, bloody hell. Oh, it's warning me, it's getting out of range. I don't have much time, but I just, I need something. I need something to analyze in the TARDIS. This is just, this is just, I, I'm like a school kid. This stuff is just, it's amazing. It's science, it's next level technology. I need something, anything. Anything that looks like gun life. I'll take this key and. Oh, the TARDIS is getting further away. I've only got a limited amount of time. Okay, okay, okay. I need something else, something else. I need more to analyse. I'll take some of the grass, yes, of course. Grass, grass, grass. Perfect. Okay, now I'm getting back into the TARDIS. Oh, it's good to have Sonic. How did I ever live all those times without Sonic? Three brothers, I would never know. Okay. 
This is my last chance to get out of here. If this doesn't work, I am stuck in the nether space forever. Okay, three, two, one. Okay, this is uh, the interview question thingy. We should finish off. In this episode, I do use this Sonic, this Pertwee Sonic, and the Talent Sonic, as well as my Matt Smith Sonic. Those are the Sonics I use. This is my main Sonic, this is the Sonic I've always got. Uh, I also have, as part of the costume, brand new Brainy Specs. My own version of my brain specs. Which are just a pair of 3D glasses, which are. Yeah, with the lenses removed. I got a watch. I, this is not annoying because it gets in the way, but. Oh well. Um, Something Chris got from the Edinburgh Fringe Festival. Yeah, oh well. I wanted it. I wanted to keep it. I've also got this waistcoat. Uh, the strap. Sh um, oh, sh that's not a strap. Braces. It's braces, yes. Um. Or if you're American, suspended. Um, TARDIS key. Black converse. And that's about it. That's about the new stuff, really. So, um, personality-wise? Personality-wise, you're going to see several different sides to the Doctor. Which is going to be interesting for you. You're going to see a funny side. A serious side. A fascinated side. And my personal favourite, the Fury of a Time Lord slash the Darkness of the Doctor side. That is going to be the one that's going to make viewers think, oh, he's going to die, he's going to die, we can see it, he's going to die. Right, that's going to be the one that you're all going to enjoy, hopefully. That's the one that I enjoy doing, because it's um, fun. So, that's it. That's my question. Kenny will do his interviews when he wants, on his camera, because he needs to charge his camera. So, hope you enjoyed the episode. See ya. And this is Chris out for this confidential. Right. What's the doctor's personality? His new doctor's personality going to be? Oh yeah, this is an interesting thing because because we haven't done it in a while. I decided I wanted to change the doctor's style a bit. Hence the black converse now rather than the grey converse. This is a funny story. I used to have black converse, right? Then they disappeared. I don't know where they went. And then suddenly they appeared in my shoebox. I asked the mum, where the fuck are these come from? Because I used to have black converse, but they disappeared. I thought they got too small for me. Um, and then mum went, I don't know, I'll ask Richard. And then nobody knew whose they were, so I went, so they must be mine. So I tried them on, they just about fit. And I thought, okay, this is part of the new look. And the other part of the new look is there is a, wa a waistcoat that I wear as well. But I don't always wear it. When I don't wear it, I tend to wear just this. But um, occasionally... If we start doing things like Christmas specials and stuff, I'll wear bow ties and ties, and there'll all be these evolutions of the costume. But the costume is more or less the same as what it used to be. I've still got my Matt Smith Sonic, um, which we're also going to try and get another one of these and make a more prop accurate one, because we really want to do that.